People back home in Arizona know that I am committed to ensuring that any legislation we pass retains America's competitiveness. So I won't support any legislation that increases burdens on Arizona or American businesses and reduces our ability to compete either domestically or globally. And so I want to make sure that if we are crafting legislation, we're doing it in a lean and efficient way that's fiscally responsible and doesn't impact things like inflation or make our businesses less competitive. So You've been criticized from progressives who say you're standing in the way of what we've been campaigning on for years, whether that's repealing the 2017 tax cuts, whether that is changing voting rights laws. What do you say to progressives back home who are disappointed in the job that you're doing here? Well, I'm serving in the exact way that I've campaigned on over the last near decade that I've served in Washington, D.C. And when I ran for the United States Senate in 2018, I told the folks of Arizona what I would do, that I would come to the Senate, try to find bipartisan solutions, be an independent voice for Arizona, and always put everyday people in Arizona first. I would say that's exactly what I'm doing. One of the ways that you negotiate in talking with your colleagues is that you're pretty forthcoming about where you stand on something. We talked about the corporate tax rate. Why do you think it is that your leadership sometimes overpromises. Do you think that that's a problem for voters and for the Democratic Party? I can only speak for myself. But what I can say is this. I would never promise something to the American people that I can't deliver. And I think it's not responsible for elected leaders to do that. The concern I have is that, first, it's not very honest. So you should just be honest. Um, that's something my parents taught me when I was very young, and it stuck. Some of your colleagues some of them progressives, think that you're kind of an enigma, that they're not sure where you stand on any one issue while you're in the middle of a negotiation. Do you think that that's a fair criticism of you? I think I'm very direct, and I am very upfront uh, when I talk to folks about what I believe in, what I can support, and what I can't support. So I think there are some people who just don't like what they're hearing, and maybe they use other terms to describe it. But uh, folks in Arizona know that I've always been a straight shooter and always will be. Would you be willing to vote with Democrats to hold up the president's mandates? Well, I'm not going to tell you those things. Uh, what I will do, though, is make sure that I'm voting in the interests of Arizonans. This is Kirsten Cinema doing a rare interview where she twists herself into pretzels to justify what is effectively an unjustifiable position. Now, Cinema says that any legislation passed with regard to Build Back Better has to retain America's competitiveness. But consider for a moment the provisions that Cinema herself has helped take an ax to, like lowering prescription drug prices. How exactly does it make America more competitive on the world stage if folks right here at home are going bankrupt from high drug prices? How does allowing the pharmaceutical industry free reign to rake Americans over the coals make us competitive? Forget about being competitive on the world stage. We are the only industrialized country in the planet where people are forced into bankruptcy over high healthcare costs. Two thirds of all Americans who declare bankruptcy cite high costs for care, meaning 530,000 families. And Kirsten Cinema has the audacity to claim that she's looking out for American competitiveness when she's entrenching a system that allows for that? Come on now. She then goes on to cite what else but some Republican talking points by claiming that this legislation has to protect against inflation. But here's the thing, while she's regurgitating these right wing talking points, the actual cause of inflation in the US, just like the cause for inflation across the entire world, is pandemic related. It's when the supply and demand of goods isn't in balance. So in this scenario, where the demand exceeds supply, cost rises to compensate for that constrained supply. Joe Biden didn't create this pandemic, nor did he create the environment that's causing causing high inflation, but what he is doing is taking steps to reduce it. For example, at the Port of Los Angeles, the nation's largest port, Biden announced a deal to establish around the clock operations to break an unprecedented container ship traffic jam. From there, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach announced plans to charge carriers $100 per day for each container lingering past a given time frame, which has also spurred movement at the ports. Jen Psaki explains both ports are moving 19% more containers than at the same point in 2018, which was the previous 
record and the points remain on target to outpace the previous record of 17.5 million containers processed in 2018. Meaning while Biden didn't create the problems that he inherited from the mismanagement of the last administration, he's clearly finding solutions for them. And beyond that, if the higher costs of inflation are hurting American families, then good news, the whole point of the Build Back Better Act is the help with costs. If Americans are feeling pinched by inflation raising prices 5%, then they will welcome with open arms lower costs for daycare. They'll welcome elder care. They'll welcome lower drug prices. They'll welcome capped insulin costs. They'll welcome free pre-K. They'll welcome $300 child tax credit checks. If you're looking for an antidote to inflation that no country in the world is able to escape, that is exactly what the Democrats are doing right now. So if Kirsten Sinema really wants to address inflation, then she will stop being among the sole opponents to the bill that actually addresses it. And look, I don't want to be unfair here. I want to be able to applaud what Cinema's doing. I want to be able to defend her. She's a Democrat who ran on a progressive platform and won in Arizona. That is an impressive feat unto itself and should be a testament to not only her skills as a politician, but also the strength of the Arizona Democrats who beat the odds and elected not one, but two Democratic senators statewide. But the issue here is that Kirsten Cinema is not governing on the platform that she herself ran on. For example, here's a campaign ad from 2018 about lowering the cost of prescription drugs. Growing up, our family struggled to make ends meet and we didn't have health insurance. No child should go without a doctor and no family should be bankrupted by medical bills. We need to make healthcare more affordable with access to the lowest cost prescriptions and fix what's broken in the system, not go back to when Arizonans had no say about their health coverage. I'm Kirsten Cinema. I sponsored this message because every American deserves quality, affordable health care. And yet now, while the Senate was negotiating the Build Back Better Act, guess who the one Democratic senator was holding back the bill over, you guessed it, drug pricing reform. Cinema reportedly not only objected to including drug pricing reforms in the bill, but she even opposed a pared back alternative pitch by House Democratic centrists that would limit which drugs would be subjected to Medicare negotiation. But hey, I'm sure that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that she's accepted over $750,000 from pharmaceutical companies and medical firms. Probably just a coincidence. And one last thing, just that I thought summed up the gaslighting that we're seeing, and that's that Cinema says this. And I am very upfront uh, when I talk to folks about what I believe in, what I can support and what I can't support. That she's very upfront and that she'll tell you what she does and doesn't support, which is immediately preceded by this. Would you be willing to vote with Democrats to hold up the president's mandates? Well, I'm not going to tell you those things. So if you needed a nice little microcosm of cinema's governing philosophy wrapped in a five second bow, that should pretty much sum things up. The fact is that cinema has the rare opportunity right now to be remembered for doing what's right for her constituents, to help pass a robust Build Back Better Act and change the lives not only of Arizonans, but all Americans. Or she can continue to serve as a mouthpiece for special interests. There is still time to do the former and keep her promise to the very people who actually put her in that position in the first place. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.